So uh, this is our first time doing anything like this, and um, it's not a podcast, so before anybody asks if it's a podcast, it's not going to be a podcast because I don't have enough energy to do a podcast. I just got this uh, equipment because I wanted to do videos to put on OnlyFans interviewing the guys because I feel like a lot of people always ask me about the guys that I shoot and about the process and just everything that like um, goes into doing this. So I thought it'd be really cool to kind of set this up and make it kind of like interviewee and then um, post the video on, on OnlyFans so that way people can watch it if they didn't get to catch it live or um, whatever. So we have Mr. Bradford here. Say hi. Hello, everyone. Mr. Bradford here. Yes, hopefully semi... <laughs> That's too funny. What did he do? He's putting the, the clapping like... He oh, was, I don't hear it on mine. You don't hear it on yours? No. Okay, so he's, oh, he'll, he'll do it again. It'll just be, you know, yeah. innocent reactions from here. That was pretty funny. So, um, <laughs> anyway, so, so we have Mr. Bradford here. Uh, this is our second time working together, so I kind of wanted to start with him and do this for the first time because I feel like uh, we kind of have a camaraderie and uh, we get along really well, and uh, we know each other. So I was like, okay, cool. Let's let's start with this. So he's threatened me to be here. Help me <laughs> for real. <laughs> yeah, he, he actually had no choice. Yeah. So um, so let's get started. So I'm gonna ask you a couple questions. We can banter back and forth. You can okay. ask me anything too if you want. Also, like, don't okay. think it's just all about you. So if you feel, okay, you know, who's your favorite model to shoot? Uh, you. <laughs> oh, perfect. Good. <laughs> Well, I mean, you're in a you're a close tie with uh, with, oh, Griffin. with Griffin. With Griffin. Oh, Griffin. That's I would wouldn't be mad if I lost to Griffin. Yes. No. You and Griffin are the same <laughs> on the same field because both of you guys are very oh, wow. Um, for real, because both of you Thanks. guys are very uh, intellectual, very calm, energy. Okay. okay. Thank you. You know what I, I mean. I think he's very intellectual. Super. And very calm. I appreciate that. I'm put in the same sentence as him. Yeah. I never feel. Um, rushed or uh what's the word <sighs> i never feel like i'm like doing something wrong because he's always like oh no it's cool let's do it you know yeah kind of like kind of like you like let's just do it let's just do it um anyway so uh like i said we're gonna ask you some questions and then you can kind of just come back and forth if anybody has any questions on here i know there's not a lot of people but that's okay if you have any questions just throw it out and um we will ask all right so mr kurt Hey. Hey. So, let's <laughs> let's tell people where you're from. I okay. think they'd be surprised. Um, I'm from a little farm town called Snohomish, Washington. I wasn't a farm boy, but lived in like a farm town. And you were what? What? Like the youngest, oldest, middlest? Um, number six of seven children. <sighs> so tell yeah. us why your mom decided to have six kids. Oh my gosh, seven, seven, seven kids. kids. Yeah. Shit. I know. I don't know. I think stupidity. Because <laughs> we were just actually having... told to. Right? Well, we were just actually having a conversation about this earlier, about how, bringing kids into the world. Yeah. And we're like, how could you do that? Yeah. Seems like a lot of stress. A lot of stress and, like, and a lot of, of like, world worrying. Is crazy. Yeah. Like, I worry about my roommate. We've already talked about this. Like, he's already 24 years old, but I'm worried about him, and I want to be, like, have a talk with him and be like, are you okay? Like, <laughs> Imagine it was your own child. If it was my own child, it'd be even worse. Yeah, it would. Um, so, anyway, so you had... You were, Seven kids. Um, what type of environment did you grow up in? Like, was it a religious environment? Was it a, you know, were your parents hippies? Were they like, you know? My parents were not hippies. They were, they're, they still are very religious. I grew up in a very orthodox Mormon home, which I'm sure you run into lots of ex-Mormon. I actually do gays. run into a lot of uh, <laughs> ex-religious, super religious uh, We run from guys. the church to the porn studios. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, well, I mean... <laughs> Did you hear it this time? No, I didn't. Are you guys doing oh, the track? Oh, damn. I trust you, though. <laughs> that was so good. Um, so anyway, uh, so they were extremely Mormon. So with that being said, out of seven kids, were you the only one that kind of got out of that? Or are your brothers, any of the brothers and sisters still? I was the first one out. And then a few years later, I had a, a brother leave the Mormon church as well. Um, and then I have a, a third brother who... Um, it's kind of like half and half. Yeah. It's a little on the fence. About but uh, other than that, everyone's quite devout. Really? Yeah. Is it one of those things also where like, um, because I watch a lot of Netflix documentaries, obviously. Um, is it one of those things I've where... I've done my research. Yeah. I've done my research. <laughs> I'm real uh, up to date with this stuff. Is it one of those things where um, they don't talk to you anymore? Or is it one of those things where it's like, it's just brushed under the rug and you know no one really says anything about it when you visit? 
Um, so I haven't seen my family in a, in a few years, um, but it wasn't necessarily they didn't talk to me. It was more, uh, as time went on, me not wanting to be associated with the toxic dynamic within my family because right. they're very much about making sure everything looks good and they'll be nice to your face. Um, but whenever it matters, there's always, um, they side with the people uncomfortable with my existence versus Yours. me in those moments of need. And so as an adult, we experienced that over and over again. I kind of hit this point where I was like, when it comes to people being bothered by my existence, I need you to choose my side. I don't care what you believe outside of that. And they weren't able to meet that, so I kind of cut the cord myself. And do you still talk to your, well, and then you said that your brother and your other brothers on the fence, do you talk to them still? Yeah, yeah, I talk to them. Are they, do they live close to you or do they live, still live? No, my whole family lives within like 30 minutes of each other. Yeah. Yeah. I've got 17 nieces and nephews. They're a big old family up there. (laughs) Could you imagine Uncle Kurt coming in with his uh, was... three inch inseam <laughs> shorts <laughs> and his crop top. Hey that's guys. right. That's right. <laughs> I was actually very excited to be an uncle for the first like five. And then I was like, this is getting out of hand. <laughs> yeah. It's too much. Too much. Yeah. Um, I understand that. I mean, my kid, my sister has uh, two kids, three kids. And um, yeah, I, I, I was excited about it. But now that they're kind of getting older and they understand like money and like, um, things you know yeah. i'm just like you don't need it how old's your oldest? my old the oldest nephew is 18 okay yeah, yeah. and he wants to move here to austin oh cool yeah to live with us that's cool i know but i'm like okay okay uh halfway house you know what i mean <laughs> <laughs> for real <laughs> yeah i mean everybody wants to live here and i get it but you know i know i'm fine but come on <laughs> stop stop <laughs> enough enough no pictures yeah. <laughs> um so that well i mean that's a pretty cool family dynamic. Um, I feel like a lot of people that I've met in the industry kind of have that same um, dynamic going on. Yeah. Um, it's very seldom that I find a guy that is super close to his entire family. Usually it's just one or two or um, it's, uh, um, you know, it's, it's he's not talking to anybody. Right. You know, so um, I'm glad that you have some people to talk to. I just came, I can't remember his name right now, but um, he recently started at OnlyFans and he was talking to me about how he just told his family mm-hmm. and he was nervous about how it would go and they were all very supportive. And I loved hearing that. I was like, must be nice. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I heard that one. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And I, I mean, and that's what I usually tell kids too whenever they come here. And I use the word kids a lot just because of the fact that I'm a lot older than a lot of these guys that I work with. Yeah. I mean, but they're not kids. Um, that's what I tell the guys a lot is that, you know, it's so much better when you have support from your family because you have someone to talk to right. because the industry I feel can be very toxic a right. lot of the times and you don't know how to handle, um, certain situations. There's a lot of figuring things out on your own. Correct. And Correct. So having support makes all the difference. Yeah. Especially family support because family support is that, that support that's like, you know, unwavering. You're supposed to be able to fall back on. Yeah. No matter Correct. what. Correct. I mean. And they have a lot of good friends. And I feel like some of the friends that I have are, are family members, you know. But uh, yeah. it's that, you know, when they are family, you know that, like, it's take it or leave it. Right. Agreed. You better take it. You take it. You take it real good. <laughs> take it real good. Mm. Uh, okay. So next next uh, question. So you escaped the hands of Mormonism. <laughs> and you... I did. You ventured Woo. out. I know. And you ventured out. What was your impression of life after that like when you were kind of like loose you know what i mean like it was you... really exciting and I... and and did you know you were gay the whole time yes ish so i came... i mean i'm assuming you're gay <laughs> how much you want to pay for a gay <laughs> um, <laughs> <laughs> i um i came out to my parents when i was 13 but it was more along the lines of I'm struggling with this thing and I need help. And we were, me and my parents were all devoted to trying to fix it. Uh, and I would tell myself that um, I'm sure I'm attracted to women. It's just has, that part of me hasn't come out yet. Mm. And there was a lot of denial going on. But yeah, I was attracted. I knew I was attracted to men like I mean, 10 I think years we all old, know. like yeah. really, really young. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I feel like when we're young, 
we don't know we're attracted to men, but we know we're not attracted to girls. When you have that feeling, you're like, whoa. Yeah, with your with a guy, but yeah. you don't have that feeling with a girl. I did not. No. Never. Neither did yeah. I. I'm like, yeah. I'm gonna braid your hair. I would convince myself I loved a girl because I liked her as a person. Right. Like, oh yeah, she's totally my type. Yeah. And that's, I'd run that's with hold it. hands. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Run with it, meaning hold hands, and maybe. Maybe. Kiss. Like, oh. Yeah. <laughs> I respect you too much. <laughs> <laughs> that's so perfect. That's good. Um. So anyway, uh. So you you got out, and what was one of the first things that you decided to do? Um. If you can date. remember. Date. Date. Just meet people. Yeah, I was I, I was a slow pace. Um, when I decided I was done with religion and wanted to date men, I went home to my family, had a big discussion with them because I wanted them to be supportive in there. And then I went home and I started going on the apps and went on a date here and there. And yeah. Um, where? Okay, so. Oh, and clothes. I started wearing. So growing up Mormon, you have to wear that special underwear. Correct. And you dress a very. And I went to the Mormon University. Oh wow. In Utah. So and you were so in that I dressed underwear. that way. So another thing I was very excited was I started dressing yeah. outside of the Mormon realm. Correct. Which was very fun. What was your very first favorite pair of underwear? Um, Jock strap. Yeah. What brand? I don't remember. Oh, I thought you were going to say that. I just remember feeling so excited wear, walking around and being like, oh, this, this, I feel sexy in yeah. these. Yeah. <laughs> it gave you a different, a little pep in your step. Yeah. 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 Um, that's so interesting that, you know, that's kind of one of the biggest things that you kind of, uh, thought about you know what I mean because <laughs> it's more it. about expression I mean being in this Mormon bubble at that university it's such a one type of mindset yeah. and so visual expression and I was a I was a photographer I was studying in the art school so that was a very fun way to explore for me firstly oh and then I started doing um, being in the photography program I started doing a lot of nude photo shoots of men oh, okay which is really fun. Yeah, <laughs> that was probably one of the first big things I started doing. And uh, with these photo shoots of men, did you ever date any of them? Did you ever like? Were you? Because I kind of feel like when you're when you're coming out for the first time, and you're, you know, not that the, you've probably been out already for a while, but like you're surrounded by that, you know, masculinity. It's someone who is very free, yeah, with their body. Right. At least with me, whenever I shoot uh, men, I love working with guys that are very uninhibited. Yeah. Because I feel like you get a lot of really great pictures. Yeah. The difference with me is I've of course been with my partner for like over 18 years, so I would I don't see that side of attraction where I'm like, "Oh my god, I want to date this guy or I think he's hot or whatever, whatever." Right. But I feel like if you're single and you're with somebody taking shoot pictures of somebody that you would probably be more inclined to be like, "Oh my god, like yeah. this is the kind of guy I want to be with. This is someone right. who is like really cool." And did you ever um, make friends with any of these guys or any down the road yes but when I was at school and starting because I was so I mean switching from this mindset of Mormonism and, and homosexuality is bad to you know being open and free isn't like a flip a switch you flip it's a process and so when I first came out it was a lot of things to try and make myself more comfortable in a space yeah. and so in these photo shoots where I was shooting naked men it was always very professional and um I didn't date them or like hook up with any of them for a long time. I, and it was just more Did about any of them space. hook up with want to, because I get that. I mean, not a lot, but you know, when I always tell guys when you're in a modeling situation and you have a photographer telling you like, oh, that's beautiful. You're great. Oh my God, that's a great picture. You know, you're kind of uh, pumping their ego up that they, yeah. they mistake that for, um, like you're hitting yeah. on them. And well, then they hit on you. You know yeah, what I mean? Like they, yeah. they're like, oh, like, you know, well, yeah. why don't you I, take it off? You when know? I first started, it was mostly mostly with straight guys. Mormon guys. Mm -hmm. And there wasn't that mm -hmm. kind of, <laughs> well, at, at least in the photo shoots, <laughs> there was none of that kind of vibe going on okay. during the photo shoot. So I started shooting gay guys later on as I started to meet people because I didn't know anybody. And obviously tension started to build. And, and it took me a long time to cross that threshold I don't just personal right. holdups and it took me a while to pass them. But uh no, at first it was just like supportive straight Mormon guys who were comfortable with themselves. I think I've seen that movie. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You can watch He's it like, on my it own was... fans. <laughs> <laughs> That's at Mr. I've Rapper. never done this before. <laughs> yes, yeah, yeah. I'm straight. I'm Mormon and I'm straight. Yes, I think <laughs> I wish. Oh, that would have blown my Mormon mind. <laughs> 
<laughs> That's so great. Yeah. Um, okay, so let's talk about um, what, so you're out, you're doing stuff. Um, did you get your heart broken? Yeah, yeah, I've had my heart broken. Was it, was the first time you had your heart broken, was that pretty intense? Um, the first one? Because I feel like you're, especially coming from a, from that background, yeah. you know, I feel like the first person you probably meet, and again, this is just me analyzing you because I know right. everything, is I feel that um, the first person you meet, it's going to be the strongest because this is like someone that you actually trust, that you actually are going to have your feelings, you know, right. shown to. Um, are you, you still friends with this person or how did it, how did that work? Um, the first person I feel like I was heartbroken with was more of like a, a warm up heartbreak in hindsight. Cause mm -hmm. it was like more of a crush. We didn't date for very long. And I think in hindsight, he just thought I was really young, just freshly out type of mentality. And was like, okay, I'm going to dump guy, you. Yeah. And, um, I was devastated. I was like, oh, this is what it feels like. This is crazy. Yeah. Cause I hadn't really felt that way about someone before. Right. Um, but then I got into my I think the I had a long term relationship after that, probably a year after that, and when we broke up, that one took me a while to get okay. through. Versus like the first one, it was it was so painful, but it was just like this quick little, I want to say like a week, and I was over it. Right, I mean, over it, and uh, but the one the long term relationship I have, obviously took me a long time to get over. So that would I would con I would say that one was the, the real deal. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And are you the type of person that you know? when time goes by you you can talk to this person again or is it one of those things where you're like it's done it's over I'm, I'm done i'm almost or i'm i'm like friendly with almost all of my former lovers nice. um some of them um more so than others but uh but it's not like there's any animosity where you're gonna see them you know no, no, I don't on fire know. island in a no. sling and they're gonna give you this look fight it out <laughs> You broke my heart. No, none of that. <laughs> so great. <laughs> no, that's good. I mean, I'm the same way too. I think it has to do with personalities also because I have dated guys in the past, like they're they hold on to that rage. You know right. what I mean? Like they're probably cancers or something. I don't know. Like Well, for me, I found a <laughs> <laughs> There's not a cancer sound. <laughs> yeah, where is it? Um for me, I think that oh I just lost my train of thought. What were we talking about? Uh, the cancer, uh, how like some people rage afterwards and they don't ever forgive. Like they just. Yeah. Oh, that's what I was going to say. So I found that through the guys I dated, I kept on finding the same situation over and over again. Mm -hmm. So I eventually took a break because I was thinking if it's, the, it's this pattern that repeats over and over again, there's a part I need to own. Right. You know, because it's not just coincidental. I just always get the same kind of guy. It's like, no, you're playing a part in this game. Right. And you keep on putting yourself in the same situation. So I took a long break from dating um, and was able to own at least a part of the the, the shit I brought to the table. Right. Um, which changed a lot of things for me. It changed a lot of my attitude towards the people I had dated before and also the people I date in the future and or I'm dating and um yeah, I think being able to look at your own behavior and be like, yeah, they brought this kind of shit to the table, but I brought this to the table. Also. Allows you to move forward and change the change yeah. the pattern, the dynamics. And that's what I don't understand whenever I meet some of these guys that like are like early 20s and they're like, you know, with their girlfriend that they love and they're going to marry. And I'm like, are you kidding me? Like you need to break up with like at least 10 more people before you know who you're going to be with. I agree. Like, but also we were all at that stage one point and it's hard to know you're going to know something more later yeah like you can't it's hindsight you can't know what experiences until you've had it correct correct and also no one scenario is proven to work or not work you know <laughs> that is true that is true i mean but it is crazy yeah like i'm coming from mormonville <laughs> the 19 year old brides and the 21 year old grooms and they stay together well yeah some like, of them but yeah but like <laughs> but some of them are religious forced. pressure yeah, yeah exactly like and they're living miserable lives like yeah it's, I agree. It's in, it's insane. It is insane. <sighs> All right, so you um, are free. You're doing your stuff, you know, living your life out loud, so to speak. And you are like, okay, um, the pandemic started. Um, I need to make some money, maybe. Oh, yeah, yeah. You know, what can I do to kind of bring that income in? And uh, you thought of OnlyFans? Or was this after the pandemic? Or how did you get into it? And what was your motivation? Yeah. You know what I mean? The pandemic definitely pushed, or not pushed, like, 
was the the, the last catalyst to get me to do it. But I would say, I mean, to go way back, my exhibitionist bone started and voyeur bone started as a as a young teenager. I would always like walk around locker rooms hoping to see, and I'd also like showing off and. Um, and then when Snapchat came around and read it, I loved anonymously putting myself out there online and finding other people. And so when OnlyFans first started, I remember hearing it being like, that sounds fun, but also, oh my gosh, I would never do that. That was my first reaction to it. I kind of feel like that's everybody's reaction. Right. And it came out, what, 10 years ish ago? I don't know how old OnlyFans is. Probably. Something about Well, there. no, it was... It didn't get crazy popular, I think, until the pandemic, but it was like probably right. two years before the pandemic. So well, it's been around way more than... Yeah, but it, it didn't get big. Right. Right? Like, Well, I was acquaintances. I'm friends now, but I was acquaintances with a couple of guys who were pretty early on, like mm -hmm. some of the first people on OnlyFans. And so I, I was aware of it at the beginning. And then they tell me about it, and I was like, ooh. I mean, that sounds hot, but also, ooh. Yeah. And it took me a while to warm up to it. But... um. There was quite a few moments where I thought about doing OnlyFans because I enjoyed the exhibitionist, the exhibitionist part of it. Um, and then when when um, unemployment came around with COVID, because at first COVID hit and I, was, I made an account, but I never posted anything. Because I was right. like, well, I don't, my hesitation was, I don't really want to do this because I have to. I want to do this because I want to. And then unemployment came around. And I was like fortunate enough to be able to make that decision. Right. Um, and so I waited. And then when the pandemic was over, at least the lockdown part of it, I was at this um, hookup. And afterwards, I was just like, why? I don't know why, but after the hookup, I was like, why don't I just do it? It sounds fun. <laughs> like, what's stopping you? Yeah, it sounds and like I, feel like a I lot of like it, it. Yeah, and I think of a lot of it as your, uh, whole, your own personal things that you have to get over before yeah. you get on there. I think there's a lot of things that, and this is what I tell guys, too, who are thinking about starting. And I feel like there's a lot of, um, questions that they have to ask themselves first and be sure that they're good with it. Right. It's a it's a big decision in the sense that there's still stigma and consequences to having your sex and your body out on the on the internet. Yeah, because once you get it you out there, control. yeah, you can't control anything. No. Um, so I think when that happened, I was ready for it because it was, I was like, I, I'm doing this because I want to do this. And so I started doing it and taking it pretty seriously and I got really lucky it built really fast. Mm. And I've been a photographer, a commercial photographer, for 10 years before. And um, quickly, this was making me more money than photography. And then it got to a point where it made more sense to do this full time. And doing photography was kind of a waste a of back, my time. Yeah. And I kind of gotten burned out by it. I wasn't very good at um, running a photography business. Yeah. And that really burned me out. So I quickly became a full time OnlyFans creator. I get, I get what you're saying. I mean, honestly, I probably wouldn't be a photographer either if Ben didn't do like a third of the things that yeah. he does. Or, well, and like, it takes a lot of business skills. Stuff. It's hard. <laughs> I'm not I'm not great at the running and getting new clients and all that kind of stuff. And that really is crucial to be a successful photographer. Yep. So, yeah. Yeah, you can't be quiet. Wasn't my skill set. <laughs> yeah. So, okay, so you, you started your OnlyFans, and what was one of the first things that you did on it that you were like, okay, this is real, I'm in it, this is it. I got cum on my face, I'm in. Like I mean, I started out with uh, <laughs> videos and, and photo, photos of myself just naked, and I loved it right away. I was like, this is so fun. And I liked also, the explicit and the naughtiness of it, the, the feeling. And before we get continue with that, I, I think one of the other biggest questions that I always get is how it grew. Because it isn't just opening OnlyFans and 10,000 people sign up for it and you're right. a millionaire. No, right. that's not how it works. Now, the first two months, I made it $8 each month. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I gave I $8. Like, yeah, I, I paid one of my friends to subscribe. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, and star everything. He liked everything, left comments. <laughs> exactly. He's like, this is so disgusting. I'm sorry, <laughs> you are <laughs> such a filthy <laughs> pig. <laughs> <laughs> Great. <laughs> um. But yes, so did you uh, have a Twitter following or anything before you started, or you just kind of started everything at once? No, so I started everything at once. I originally started with my Mr. Bradford name because I didn't want my photography business to oh. get mixed up with the OnlyFans stuff. Not because I was worried people would find out, because when you put it online, you really can't control. But in my mind, I just wanted when you typed in 
for my photography, found my photography. Right. I and still they had those see, clients. Like, photography and, and then. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So um, it was a new, I started Instagram and Twitter and just was posting on it. I want to say almost daily right away, but maybe it wasn't quite that at first. And just kind of slowly started. And I don't know, I think a few accounts saw me and reposted and that happened over and over and it started building faster and got its own momentum after a while. Right. Um, but yeah, I don't think it was, uh, it probably took me four to mm, probably five months before it was like paying my bills. Right. And then maybe six to eight months where it was like, was oh, this, this is nice. This yeah. is great. Yeah. There's some expendable income here. <laughs> right. It's a little consistent now. Yeah. Um, and I, and this is another thing that I always kind of tell guys to, and I'm hoping that, um, the more people that I talk to, I'm going to try not to repeat everything because I feel like Different I tell, information. Well, I just feel like I tell the same thing to all the guys that always ask me. And I always get asked a lot about OnlyFans just because of the fact that I work with a lot of you guys. Yeah. So they think that I have some sort of like Yoda mentality about it, which I don't. I just listen to what everybody else tells well, that's me. how you get information, right? Right. So It's also mysterious. Yeah. So uh, where was I going with this? So what I tell guys is like it's it's – it's a good revenue stream, but if you're a performer, there's only so far you're going to get posting nude pictures, and then oh, you're yeah. going to have to up it. Right. And there's only so far you're going to get by masturbation. You're going to have to up it. Right. It's only so far you're going to get, and, and they don't get that. They're like, well, all I want to do is X, Y, Z. I'm like, well, then you're only going to make a little bit of money. Right. You definitely have to be committed. Yeah. It's not this just... Easy peasy. Yeah, let Sign me just. Up, it's done. Post a selfie. Yeah, and I think a it. lot of guys think that. Yeah. What would you say is the hardest thing about keeping up with your OnlyFans? I mean, besides messaging, because we were talking about that earlier. <laughs> <laughs> um, hardest part of keeping up with my OnlyFans? Or, or staying motivated for it. Because it is, it's hard work. I you mean, you have your highs and lows, yeah. And I don't do, I don't perform on mine. God, no. But like, I post my work and I mean just right. posting my work and doing things to make people want to come is crazy hard so I could imagine having to also throw sex into it right meeting different guys right. you know making sure that I'm healthy making sure that I'm working out making sure that I'm yeah well yeah. it's an interesting um two things to keep in hand like on one side it's then to, to do well you need to be active all the time and doing things creative or finding new ways to engage with people. And like, there's that business side where if you want people to be engaged and like your stuff, you have to pour a lot into it, if you're feeling it or not. But then the other side of things, and the great thing about OnlyFans and these types of platforms is that it's all on your terms. So you get to make your own boundaries and all those kinds of things. So I do, I try to do both at the same time. Like, what are my boundaries? What are the things that make this so it stays fun and I can stay in a healthy mental space? And also, how can I constantly try and keep this up and keep it because it's my job and I can't just not work. Um, and so for me, when it's like I'm not feeling it all, I try to make a lot of content when I am feeling it. So during those spells where it's like I just am not feeling super hot or super sexual right now, you have I can up. give myself that space to just not be in front of the camera for a few days. Right. Um, so just different things like that, you have to figure out what works for you. But it's not just, it's exactly how I want. Because it's not, people aren't going to want to be subscribed to you. Right, right. I mean, you have to put on a show. Yeah. You got to find that right balance for yourself. Because it definitely can get catch you up. And all of a sudden you're in the space where you don't know how you're doing mentally. And you lose touch with yourself. So yeah, you have to, you have to watch out. Now, uh, I, one thing that I feel is really cool is you do kind of, start to connect with other creators, only fan creators. And you do kind of become sort of this family because, you know, I'll still get calls from guys and they'll be like, Oh my God, some guy just asked me to piss in a bottle and send it to him. Right. And I'll be like, uh, can you put apple juice in there? And like, you know, <laughs> he's like, no, you know, but he's going to pay me a lot of money. What should I do? I'm like, well, the problem is that you can't send stuff like that over the mail. So there's yeah. number one. Okay. You know, and I'll tell him, I'm like, this is the risk that you're taking. So if you do, you're going to have to do this, 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 you know, mm -hmm. or, you know, you need to try, or they're not comfortable with it. And I'll be like, well, what amount of money will make you comfortable? Yeah, yeah. If any amount of money will make you comfortable. And those are good questions to ask because they're just things you need to know for yourself. Like, where, what are my Your limits? Boundaries. And also, what is, 
something I'm willing to do versus something I'll never do. And then things that you're into. Like for me, there's three ranges. There's things I'm really into, things that I'm fine with, and things that I'm like, nope, I'm not going to yeah. do it. Not because there's anything bad with it, because it's not my cup of yeah, tea. Yeah, it's not your cup of tea. And yeah. they're like $5,000. And I'm trying to make this, yeah. And you're like, okay, I will do it. I'll do it. I was just kidding. <laughs> kidding, guys. There's I'm a in. price for everything. Yeah. <laughs> Shocker. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> I want cheese, my eggs. <laughs> Please. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there is. There are. and But that's another thing, like you said. It's a it's a good, you, you create your own boundaries and you do what you want to do. Yeah. Um, so names, give me something. You don't have to name names of the person or the... the um, their handle or whatever yeah. but like what is something that um you've done that was like you know what i don't think i would have ever done that if i had been asked and you weren't too bad you weren't upset about it but you were like i would have probably never done anything like that before like what's something that and you can like, it, like they had us try something and i just decided i wasn't into it no or you were into it you know what i mean like they were like okay i want you to you know have five guys come on your face and you're like, oh my God, I don't want to do that. And then you do it and you're like, oh my God, I'm like at the bathhouse every weekend now and getting like. <laughs> um, <laughs> you're like, well, that, yes, that's. <laughs> did you, you, you've you been did. subscribing to my OnlyFans. <laughs> <laughs> Were you the guy who made that request? Yes. Oh, okay. I thought you looked familiar. <laughs> I don't know. I, I haven't really been in that scenario because, um, because I've asked myself those questions beforehand. So everything that I've done it's because I've already decided I want to do it. Okay. You know, like that realm of like, I'm really into this or I'm okay with trying that and then we'll try it. Um, I'd say, I don't know if it's allowed to say this on this platform, but more of like piss play is something where I was like, I'm fine with trying it and then find that I'm a little into it. Right. So, um, but in general. But that's like the extent of the extra, uh, the, uh, what's the word? I'm like the bodily function. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that you'll do. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I've been I've been requested. Um, I'll go ahead and make that message disappear that I sent you earlier. Then. <laughs> <laughs> well, we were still we were still haggling about prices. So right. Don't stop. Don't stop yet. Yeah, I'll see how high get you. <laughs> um, no, I'd say like I'm not interested in doing shit play. Right. But um, yeah, piss play was something I was like, oh, this is fun, and and foot play is more something I've been exploring because of requests and OnlyFans and I've found that I've enjoyed it. Yeah. Whereas like it started out as like okay, I'm not, I'm not it. against it. Like I'm fine with it and then be like, oh this is fun. It's yeah. ticklish. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I like how the soft wetness when my my foot is in someone's mouth. Oh uh, yeah. I'm just not <laughs> and the heat. <laughs> it's hot. I'm just that's not my thing. <laughs> I mean I get it though. Yeah. yeah. That's okay. Yeah. Well, what about for 5K? For 5K, I'd be into it. Okay, okay. In case <laughs> it, like that? stepping on my face, you know, just. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> the people want it. Yeah. Like Our live know. audience are very happy. I know. Like, <laughs> the live audience. <laughs> um, so, yeah. So, yeah, I agree with you. Um, so, do you find it harder? Do you find it hard to find people to work with? Or. Because I know you do some collabs. I don't know if you do a lot. I, I mean, honestly, I really don't follow your OnlyFans. You, you sent me oh, the. Oh, know. Me. <laughs> no, but I no. I but you sent to me, and I was looking I'm at not a little succeeding bit. Succeeding and engaging my subscribers. Yeah, I don't. Really <laughs> you're really not that interesting to me. But, <laughs> no, <laughs> you're quite bored. <laughs> honestly, the only reason I subscribe is because you pay me to do it. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah, yeah. No, I don't. And I usually and and people kind of um, ask me about that. But I think one of the biggest reasons I don't subscribe to a lot of guys is because. The fantasy ends for me when I meet you. Okay. Because to me, when I'm friends with somebody, I just don't see it anymore after that. Like, yeah. I can't watch you and jerk off because yeah. I'm like, I know him. I know Kurt. Like, yeah, yeah. No, that makes sense. I see that. My I want to like, horrible. No, no. I just want to call you and be like, <laughs> <laughs> no, I just like, you know, I feel like a mom, you know, I'm like, I just want to call yeah. you and be like, are you sure you're okay? Yeah, you know what yeah. I mean? Or did they make you do that? <laughs> or, you know, <laughs> that was a lot of piss. You look dehydrated. You looked really sad. I just, drinking your water. <laughs> yeah, drinking yeah. your water. <laughs> <laughs> but for real, and that's how I feel um, with a lot of the guys that I shoot because we do become friends. So it's like, it's always. <laughs> I have to like kind of look elsewhere to get my rocks off, so to speak. And yeah, so yeah. like, um, you enjoy an anonymity. Correct. Yeah, yeah. I don't, I, I just feel too, um, involved. Yeah. You know, I, um, this is a little bit of a tangent, but I'll bring it back. Go for it. So I was just, I love cruising. I love anonymous type right. of hookups. Um, and I always call that cruising and my, 
partner lives in Australia and they, they use cruising as in like chill. But I didn't know that. And they would just be like, oh, we're just cruising tonight and all that stuff. And he'd say it a lot. And I was like, oh, that's fun. That's cool. But he was with his best friend who's a girl. And he was like, yeah, me and so-and-so, we're just ch- we're just cruising tonight. And I was like, in my mind, I was like, you don't, it's not really cruising if you know the people. Yeah. Like that's more like friends with Bennies or I don't know. Yeah. Um, also, I didn't. You tell me you're gay, and she's she's a girl. This is all just going in my head. I'm very confused. And so I was like, so what does cruising mean to you guys? Because I'm confused right now. And he's like, it just means, like, chill. I was like, oh, okay. Oh. I, whenever I hear cruising, I've only understood and you're it like, as, like, well, anonymous I'm gonna go cruising hookup too. in public. I was like, well, I didn't care. I was like, that sounds fun, but I just doubt you're actually out there with your best, friend best girlfriend cruising. cruising. Like that's In just, the park. You don't... I don't think that's your thing. <laughs> uh, uh, yeah. That's so funny. <laughs> Anyways, back to, um, you know, meeting people. Yes. And, yeah. So. Like, how do you find yours? Do they reach out to you? Do you reach out to them? Or does it just like. All of the happen? above. And for me, it's very important to connect with the person on some level. Like, actually enjoy them. So I don't collab as much as um, I think would be fiscally beneficial. Correct. Um, because for me, I'd rather leave money on the table and save it for when it's like, I really like this person and or have some sort of sexual chemistry with the person. And so I haven't really had that many bad experiences because of that. Cause if I filmed with them, it's like, Oh, we're cool. And I, I want, to you've already, this, this yeah, you've already established that. Yeah. And, it, and we tend to communicate a lot. So there's no, a lot of surprises. I'm right. not walking into something and being like, oh, this is nothing we talked about. Yeah. Um, Why are you choking me? <laughs> yeah. So <laughs> I'm not into this. <laughs> <laughs> no, you can choke me for sure. <laughs> oh, late with the sound effect. Late with the sound He was looking for it. He couldn't find that one. <laughs> when in doubt. You're doing so good. When in doubt, just do the audience. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Makes me feel better. <laughs> it really does. It really Keeps is a... Ego. Uh, an energy boost. Yeah. Um, so, so collabing's great. And yeah. I had a really good experience with it and haven't had, I mean, I've heard of bad experiences and I guess I've just been lucky enough to, 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 to evade those video with cool people. Well, and I also feel like the lifestyle you lead is a little bit different too. Um, cause again, working with all these different types of, of guys, you know, uh, you have the people that are like you that are real, you know, chill and, you know, thorough about what you do and then you have people that are just like on that high yeah you know just and i think anybody, that's cool. everybody too yeah it kind of fit what fits your sexuality correct and that, that that looks it's different for so many people what fits mine is being a little more um waiting to see that we sync you know yeah. and uh well it just makes also for a better scene too yeah Right? I mean, you're right. into it. It's, right. it's not always, faking it. That always reads. Like, the people always know when there's like, oh, that one was really hot. And it's like, yeah, it was. <laughs> yeah. Tip me. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I need a tip. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. So, let's see. Um, so, we did a shoot yesterday with Porter. Yeah, that was great. That was fun. And you hadn't met him before. That's true. And he got here. And I, I knew you guys were going to hit it off because of the fact that he is super... Um, I don't want to say OCD, but I want to say OCD because he's, he's said it, you know, but he's okay. super like, um, very meticulous. He's very, uh, um, he knows what he wants to do. He knows, you know, he's not uh, wishy-washy. He's very to the point. He's about business, you know, working with someone who understands their boundaries is correct. Nice. Yeah, correct. And you guys, of course, hit it off. Yeah, yeah, the tension built great. And by the end of the shoot, we're like, let's film a let's scene. Let's film a and scene, yeah. And I was like, oh, oh okay, I guess we're going to film Yeah, that was fun. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So, but um, I think that also helps because, I, I mean, I get the sense from him, too. I am also would be comfortable being like, I think that was good. I think we're good for today. You know, if there wasn't a Yeah, vibe. if there wasn't a vibe, yeah. Yeah, and just leaving it what we had made. And that's how it was when he was at our uh, summer house, too. Like, he... He wanted to be there a few days before to kind of meet people before he decided who he wanted to yeah. do stuff with. Right. You know what I mean? Because, again, I mean, it is – it's still sex. I mean, it's still pretty hardcore. You're doing something very – And it's emotionally connected to you. Yeah. It's not like you're typing up a report or having a meeting with somebody. Well, to me, it's like that, but <laughs> – Yeah. <laughs> That's true. On. They just keep on coming. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> it's so cool you got a live drum set here. That's I know, crazy. isn't it neat? I'm gonna. <laughs> it's the house band. Yeah, oh, okay. <laughs> it goes with the live audience. Less budget. I know, right? You should be tipping me more. I should be, but <laughs> you know, kidding. maybe for the next one. <laughs> okay, so let me see. I want to do. I want to go some of the questions. I don't want to miss anything. Um. So, would you say that? Would you say that OnlyFans is worth it to you? Like, would you say that? Like, are there any? And I know everybody has regrets on something. Like, don't bullshit me that everything's been hunky dory. Yeah. But like, are there? Are you? content with where everything's at and where everything's going yes um so referring to those like not hunky-dory moments in my mind everything is ridiculous so it's like there's a there's a stigma behind doing sex work or doing porn or like posting your nudes online like that has some serious consequences in the professional world at times um and all that stuff's kind of real or is real consequences however I think all of us are selling our time and our bodies to try and pay our bills and have a home and eat food and have somewhat of a happy life. I agree. And so my moments where I'm like, oh my gosh, maybe those stigmas are coming up into my mind and I'm having to deal with them or I'm not feeling motivated. I just kind of remember we're all in this ridiculous situation in this weird world and we're all like, there's nothing more weird about what I do than someone who's spending 40 plus hours at an office trying to type up reports on a budget or something. I don't right. know. And no judgment there. It's just are standing up all day in a grocery store scanning groceries. Right, and it's know? so it's like, well, do you regret doing this? It's like that's a weird question in the sense that we all have to make money and we all have to give up our most valuable assets to do so. Um, I have a lot of fun a lot of the time doing this, and to me that makes me feel very lucky. And so when I have, I'm like, this is a shitty day, and I really think this is hard, and the work's catching up with me in one way or another. Um, I'm like, well, that's really cool that doesn't happen to me every day. It actually happens to me quite seldomly where... Um, there are people that that's every single day of their life is... Yeah, and it's a trade-off, one thing for another. So I, my trade-off is that my body and my sexuality is online for people to do you know, respect or disrespect whatever they're doing. Um, but in the first, I like enjoy doing it in the first place, like even when I wasn't making money off of it, I was doing it. And so it's not a bad situation. It's not a bad scenario for me. Yeah. And I have a lot of fun with it. <laughs> Good. Thank you guys. Thank you audience. We appreciate that. <laughs> we appreciate the support. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> um, we're going to get into something else soon, but I have one more question um, about only fans that I didn't ask. Hold on. Um, okay. Name uh, one negative that you feel is an OnlyFans negative relation. Because I feel like, again, uh, this is just from other people. They think that OnlyFans is hunky-dory. You know, I'm just going to make all this money, and I'm going to be fucking everybody, and I'm going to, you know, just be rolling in the cash two days later. What is one negative? You just name one negative of being an OnlyFans creator or content creator. The... Uh... And it can be anything. It doesn't have to be yeah. something serious. You know what I mean? Like, no, yeah, for sure. I just want to get a good answer. Um, the presumption of consistency. So, like any kind of freelance position, you you stop working hard at it, it dies. Also, if you keep on doing the same thing, it dies. And so, one of the hard things about it is that you have to keep on pushing and farther and and finding new ways to engage with people. And that's not always, I guess that's just very contrary to the image that it's just like, oh, take a few pictures, put it online, and all of a sudden you made 10 grand. Right. You know, it's um, a lot of work. Any sugar daddy situations? I'm available for sugar daddy situations. <laughs> he is non-diabetic, and he really needs that sugar, guys. So that's right. Any, that's right. <laughs> anybody <laughs> with extra sugar. <laughs> no, no daddies. No sugar daddies. <laughs> Yet. Yet. <laughs> After this, we'll, we'll see. Um, okay, so now we're going to get into a little, we're going to end with the talking about your modeling career because I feel like when I first met you, I had seen you do rough skin. Yeah. And I remember thinking, oh my God, I have to work with this guy. Like, because I loved Thank your you. look. I loved your um, little short hair and like your, yeah. your little mustache. Yeah. And I was like, oh my God, this guy is so perfect. Like, I need to work with him. Um, so you started off doing rough skin? Like, how did you get into that part of the industry? Um, 
Was it well, just through a friend or they were like, oh, my God, this guy is, you know, on OnlyFans. You know, was it reconnected to that? Like, did they find you through there or how did it? My first modeling scenario was with, I forget what it's called. It's little pocket things on the back of your phones that pop out and you put on your phone. Oh, yeah, the pop sockets or whatever. Pop yeah. socket, I think it's called. I was hired to model for pop socket. <laughs> and I got that because 10 years as a commercial photographer, I know a lot of photographers and and um, I'd done stand-ins here and there, but that was the first time a photographer reached out to me like, you've got a good look and we want to pay you, you and have hire good hands. you. Yeah, my hands are fantastic. <laughs> They're magical. Um, and, uh, <laughs> uh, and then Roughskin was my first big um, underwear. Campaign gig. type of thing. Yeah. Right? I love Roughskin. They're so great, and they're they're they've always been so nice to me. Shout out to Roughskin. I like them also. They're amazing. Um, I've been able, fortunate to work with them a couple of times, and you know through them, other people noticed me, and it turned into this thing that um, brought a lot of traffic to Mr. Bradford's Instagram. Correct. I mean, well, yeah, that's like, I mean, that's kind of like what TikTok stars do right now. You know, like yeah. if they're noticed in the public eye i mean they want everybody that's the first thing i feel like every gay guy does is they see somebody really cute on instagram or some ad they look them up they're going see, on they're only fans. Fans. yes oh my gosh i do that <laughs> and then they're not you're like i mean i did that for only fans like if there was a cute celebrity as a teenager i was googling like celebrity plus naked photos like <laughs> The Even if they 13 were year old Kurt, like waiting for the like photo to download a line at a time. You're showing the age now. Like, what is he talking about? <laughs> and then my mom would pick up the phone and it would disconnect. I love the Bob the Drag Queen uh, joke where he's talking about how it would be so much nicer if you're straight because like you had to wait so much longer for it to look. Oh, all yeah, the way it took all the way down for a guy. And yeah, the, girls. Like, the girls was just down to your tits, but <laughs> us gay guys were waiting for the whole picture to load. Oh, my God, the wait. <laughs> and then it would freeze. Yeah. And you would be fucked. I because... know. Really, oh, God, so many problems. Someone would try and make a call. Yes. Yeah. Oh, anyway. <laughs> oh, technology is so doing so much good for us. These yes, days. yes. The gay industry. <laughs> <laughs> so what we're talking about? Oh, the modeling. So we liked Russell. Oh, yeah. So, um, did you end up getting an agent, or did you end up getting an agency? Um, uh, not really. I mean, I, I do have one now, um, and I'm not necessarily contracted solely to him. So, like, he gets me work, and I get my own work. Okay. Um, but uh, that happened a lot later. So. I mean, I, I kept with modeling because I was like, oh, this is a good way to getting traffic. And the other nice thing is about being a model with a photography hand, like, or history, is that there's just certain things that you know that a photographer wants. And so I think a lot of photographers found an ease working with me because... Well, yeah, you are so easy to work with because you know your angles, you know where the light is, you know. Yeah, I spent a lot of time telling, telling models other how people. to do things. And I, and I worked a lot with people who had never modeled before. And so I got really rehearsed in, like, teaching people how to pose and stuff. And so I've been able for, I've been really fortunate to work with a wide range of photographers and some of them are very like very specific and some of them are very, um, just, fluid. just do what you want to do. And I really enjoy working with all of those kinds of scenarios because I know what it's like to be on that side of the camera. And I think that's benefited me as a model and it's turned into something that I really enjoy. Like right. I, I mean, I enjoy the fashion of it, but then I also enjoy when it, is naughty like it's like take your clothes off do this and right that whole naughty feeling of it is, like kind of what we did yeah it's really enjoyable <laughs> like, i like it no that's good i don't know if you've noticed but i get into it i know yeah. well and i also i also am appreciative that you are like that with me because i always tell guys too like you have to be comfortable with the person that's shooting you in order to be in that vulnerable type of position yeah even if you are an exhibitionist you know you're right. not just going to take your clothes off in front of somebody that is like you're not vibing with if it's awkward, it, it's just painful for everyone. Yeah, yeah, it's not a good experience. Yeah. Um, one of the biggest ones that and I think I told you this uh, yesterday or maybe two days ago was that one of the biggest ones that I was so envious of and so like happy that you did was the stuff that you did with Hollywood Bruisers. Oh, he's fun to work with. Yeah, yeah. Like that was so creative, so fun. Yeah. And like I feel like you probably got a lot from that because I feel like I always saw that ad everywhere. Yeah. I think the there's a particular one. I've shot with him a few times. And they always do really well, but there was one with like a 70s basement type vibe. Yes. And that one. With the little TV and the. Yeah, I think, I mean, random people I've 
I haven't talked to for years would like send me a text being like, oh my gosh, look at this email I got of you. Or like, I saw this picture of you. I didn't know you were a model. That's so cool. Like it went around. Yeah. It was great. Yeah. I think that was one of my favorite ones. And, uh, I always, I'm always interested when you work with him because I know that you guys are going to come up with some really cool shit. Um, Thank you. Um, especially when you guys work together. So is there anybody, like, I know you've worked with a lot of photographers, but is there any other photographer that you would like to work with that you haven't worked with yet um, that we can like call out on here and just. There's a few that I've, <laughs> I know I've messaged them, but it's like, w hasn't worked out yet with like timing and mm. locations around the world. Like Dylan Ross. Ross oh, that's or, right. We were talking about that yesterday. Yeah. Um, or today. Paul. You have Freeman. Voice, Freeman, thank yes. you. Oh, I love his stuff too. Oh, you um, should have did it. I'm so mad at you. Well, there was a second time too, but um, he, I was in Australia and he was in Australia, but uh, I was just so busy and that's like you need to make the time. Out. I know. I need. I regret not I making that the time book. for him. He's great. I would love to work with him. Um, like I want a barn like him. I want a barn. I know. I want, his like, scenarios are so hot. Yes. I have his book. That's the the horses in the in the outback. Yes. It's called outback. Outback. Something. Yes. Yeah. That's a good one. Oh, he's so good. I'll yeah. get there someday. Kevin Hoover, I think he's yes. in New York. I haven't worked with him. We've talked about working together. Or maybe he's in Palm Springs. I kind of get confused who's where. Yeah. But yeah. Those are some good ones. Yeah, they're good. All right. So last up, we're going to talk about. Uh, Hope your... we work with Transphoto again. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe. We'll see. I'm lucky enough. <laughs> if you're lucky enough. <laughs> Not after this podcast. <laughs> we'll see how this does. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Um, no, I love you here, and like I'm trying to get Griffin here. to come here, and I think it would be cool if I got both you guys to come here that'd at the same so time yeah, to shoot, be like because he's Griffin. such an so, old man, so he doesn't great. want to leave anywhere. He wants to stay in <laughs> Chicago. Three peas in a pod if we were all in the same I house. Know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what are you guys doing this weekend? Oh, we're gonna hang out. <laughs> we're not going out, but I get it, and that's why I don't get mad at him because right. I understand I'm the same way. Like, I know I don't want to go to Chicago. Yeah, yeah. I don't want to travel. I want to stay at home and bake my home. cookies. Exactly. Come here. Sit yeah. Here. Come bake me cookies. Okay. So last question. Are you single? Dating? No. no I, I've been dating. My partner and I have been together for just a year. So we're pretty new. Um, we've been doing long distance, but that's soon to be over. So I'm excited about that. And how does he feel about you doing what you do? He's very supportive. I mean, that's obviously... I was already doing it when we met. Mm -hmm. um, and we're pretty on... Par is like being on the same page when it comes to the ideas of what the sexual dynamic relationship should be. Right. And so. And I think that's the biggest thing. Like um, we were talking about this too is honesty. And yeah. um, because I always tell, again, this is another thing that I always tell the guys, especially the straight ones or the, you know, straight ones that have girlfriends. And I'm like, okay, like yeah. if you're going to start this, you might as well just break up with her now because yeah, it's not going to work. You know what I mean? And, it, yeah. and I said, if you don't, then you need to tell her exactly what you're doing, because if you don't, she's going to be on Twitter, scrolling yeah. on Twitter, and then she's going to see your asshole up in the air. See people getting saying spit things on. about it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> wow, you're really wanting him to do a lot. <laughs> we're, no, talking about, what were we talking about earlier? I said the same thing. We were talking about somebody else. Oh, somebody else. We were talking oh, about yeah, somebody. yeah, yeah. Yeah, you were, you were like. Oh, the straight boys. Yep. <laughs> you want them to dive in the deep end real fast. I'm all listen. You're gonna have to <laughs> get fucked by a guy. Yeah, like, <laughs> the first time. <laughs> yeah, that's first gonna be video the first scene for free on Twitter. <laughs> on Twitter, yeah. then maybe someone will follow you. <laughs> yeah, then you'll get something. But these guys put everything out there. Like it's so competitive. It is competitive. Yeah. Like you're gonna have to show that starfish. <laughs> <laughs> Let me see that. What's his name, Patrick? On a uh, yes, SpongeBob? yes, Patrick. You're gonna have to show, show Patrick off. <laughs> Bend over, let's see that starfish. Yeah, cute. <laughs> Make sure she's clean. I mean, I'm into it. <laughs> but yes, honesty. So you're honest yeah. with him. Yeah, I think um, my personal belief is that monogamy is an interesting, like, old idea. Yeah. And you know, pick the poison you want. But um, I, I. I just think it's kind of silly. And he's very much on the same page. And I guess we both are just honest with each other about things. And that that's being honest with your feelings, being honest about things that happened. And um, I guess that's – people all ask, what's your rules? And I guess that's our rules. That's your rule. Yeah. We just communicate. That's good. Yeah. And, and I mean, sometimes he films for me or he'll, you know, be my photographer. I mean, that's nice artist. to have too. It is nice. Yeah. Really nice to have. We haven't. I mean, going into the relationship, I was worried. This is my first time dating someone while doing OnlyFans, and um, so I was very nervous about what kind of 
reaction hurdles this might put in the yeah. relationship and then we had our big conversation about it and was like oh my gosh it's so nice that we're so on the same page still nervous i'm like well we'll see how it plays out and i've been very fortunate that it's just been smooth as butter he's the one <laughs> yeah. yeah he's the one he's the one <laughs> i hear the church bells <laughs> 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 All right. Well, we're going to stop right there because it's been an hour and I'm done talking. That we've was already, fun. I though. mean, we've literally talked since you've gotten here. Yeah, that's true. So, I mean. Oh, there's a microphone here. Yeah. Oh, yeah. There we go. Someone's doing so, us. <laughs> I want to thank you for coming again and doing this for the first time with me. Um, I think it was really insightful and I really want people to get a feeling of that you are a person. I'm you're a not person. Just a, you're just not a piece <laughs> of meat. I, sometimes a piece, I'm a of, piece hairy of meat, meat, but it's only because I said so. Exactly yeah, yeah, on yeah. your terms. Yeah, for anyway. ten dollars. <laughs> just kidding. <laughs> well, hopefully we'll see him again soon. Sometime. Yes, we'll please. see how this goes. Thank you for having me. This was great. Yes, it was fun. All right, we're, we're done. Thank you. Bye. <laughs> Bye. <laughs>